I wonder if you could tell me a bit about what yourself and the band's been up to the last um, I don't know six months. Are you recording? Or? Yeah, yeah, we've been. Um, we uh, you know we released Swan in like March last year, and uh, since uh, we've done that, we we just went out and did a headline tour in support of that. I mean, this summer we went out on uh, the American Warp tour. Oh, cool. And then uh, we did a headlining tour in just in support, again, of Swan. And uh, that's been about it. It's kind of doing laps, and now we're just kind of gearing up and ready to come down to Soundwave. Yeah, cool. Um, have you played Soundwave before? Yeah, we did the first Soundwave ever. Uh, we did yeah. the first one with Grinstone. Yeah, cool. Um, and Yeah, it was cool. It was, uh, it was a lot smaller, I want to say. But there must have been only like you know, eight or ten bands. Yeah, right. Well, it's definitely... Uh, progressed from there it's a massive lineup the last few years and this year as well yeah they had fucking iron maiden <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that? iron maiden who they danzig was supposed to play this year as well but something happened there that would have been a coup yeah totally but um but regardless like you know this this lineup is is ridiculous and with so many ridiculous fans on the same bill it's amazing to see how far sound waves come but yeah so this is a 10th annual sound wave and so you know, we got invited to come back to be a part of the 10th annual Soundwave. We were, you know, we we're obviously honored and super stoked. Sweet. Uh, are there some bands on the lineup that you you'll try and catch? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, you know, we've been playing music for a long time. A lot of these bands have been around a long time, so it's like, you know, we're stoked to see the Used and you know, see you know, Angels and Airwaves and Bad Religion. You know, we've done several tours with them, and you know, Greg, you know, produced our second record, Oz Factor. And, uh, you know, we've done a lot of festivals, too, out here in the States, so we've played with, you know, like, System of a Down and shit, so... That band is amazing. You know, yeah. whether you're a fan of them or not, when you see them live, it's like, whoa, this is truly fucking insane. They're awesome, huh? They're, like, probably, they're probably the loudest... I think they're the loudest band I've ever seen. I remember at a big day out, they came out after Slipknot and just yeah. turned it up another 20 decibels or something and <laughs> blew the stadium away. Yeah, they're they're fucking they're really really mean, and so like when they broke up, I was pretty bummed, you know. And then like to see them reunited is pretty cool. But there really is like you know Meshuggah, and there's some there's so many like you know gnarly bands on the bill, and I, you know every time I look on the, the lineup, someone else new is getting added on too. So it just keeps on growing and growing and growing. Yeah, definitely. So, I did want to talk a bit about um, music festivals in particular with you, so we might do that now. I mean, like you said. Unwritten Law's been around a long time. In Australia at the moment, the whole festival scene's really changing. A few have sort of um, had to cancel this summer because of poor ticket sales. Others have evolved, and there's a lot of smaller boutique-type festivals now. Could you tell me a bit about how, how you've seen music festivals in general, the ones you've played at, sort of rise and change over the last, I don't know, what is it, 20 years since you guys have been around? Yeah, you know what's, you know what's pretty weird is, like, and, you know, uh, Australia and Europe... In Japan, I always have these amazing, and South America always have these huge music festivals. And America really didn't have a lot of, you know, music festivals, you know. Like, you know, and up until there was Lollapalooza kind of started it all when we were starting. And um, that was a tour by, you know, Perry Farrell or whatever. And, um, you know, it was, pretty, it, was pretty, it was pretty cool. And it kind of came, and then festivals just kind of didn't happen anymore. So it kind of died out. And, you know, since then, like in America at least, it's like you have now you have like festivals like Coachella and Bamboozle, which are now kind of mimicking like, you know, Australian and European festivals, which are just massive big day outs, you know, South, yeah. and, you know, sound wave. But, or, but Coachella is basically, you know, it's not like a rock festival. It's like it has every band, you know, from the Black Keys to Radiohead this year to, you know, I mean, everyone. So, so like, uh, festivals are just kind of new, and like, you know, I'd like to say newer in the United States than they are, like, in Australia or, or, you know, places that are used to having them. But, I mean, I don't think there's a better, like, kind of venue and place to see music because you get to see so many different acts that are international and of different genres of music, and it really opens, it opens people's eyes to different things. So, I mean, for me, music festivals are amazing. It's like I'll rarely leave the house to go to a show, and that's something I really have to see, you know? But um, other than that, like, I will go to a festival just because there's shit to do and, like, other bands to see and, like, just, you know, cool, cool energy and cool shit going on. You, you said you did a bit of touring last year. Did you venture overseas when you were touring for Swan? No, we did. We right before the record came out, we came to Australia, and it came out like two or three weeks after we had just after we left. So because we, we, our management wanted us to be in the United States when it released, so we came back here. And as soon as that happened, we just did laps in the United States, and we did the Warp Tour, which is you know, 
it's a, it's a pretty big honor yeah. here in the States at least. And so, you know, we've just been kind of doing laps in support of Swan over here. And uh, after Soundwave, we will be, we'll be, we will be coming to, um, we will be coming to Australia, and we'll be going straight from Australia to Japan, and then I believe Hawaii on the way back, and then we'll come back and do another tour in support of our new single, Nevermind, that comes out in February. Okay, well, in the, in the last couple of years, then, have you seen a change in the live music scene in the States and when you've toured in Australia? Have you noticed crowds smaller or venues getting smaller or bigger or anything like that? Oh, definitely. I think that, I mean, especially in America with the economy, I mean, the economy is one thing, but the ticket-buying audience is way down, and that goes for all festivals, all shows, all everything. So there's not a lot of people that are going out and paying to see live shows, and, you know, and, and rock being, you know, one of the genres is definitely taking a hit. You know, you know, uh, rock is still really big in, like, Europe and Australia and Japan and South America, but in, in America, like, you see a lot of, like, you know, house and techno bands and DJs, that's really becoming like, those are like the new rock stars over here. And I, I know it's kind of translating down there and everywhere else as well. So, I mean, you're seeing like a lot of big, like, you know, electronic, electronic festivals popping up here. And like, you know, you know, that's just kind of like the, what's going on over here. So like, you know, in, in, before, like in, you know, we first started playing for the first 10 years of our career, every New Year's Eve, we'd be playing a show somewhere. And then, you know, the last, like, you know, five or six years, you've seen, like, you know, there, you know, clubs are basically just hosting DJs and so forth. So I think electronic music is really coming to the forefront and really is going to be a major player. Uh, and then it's, it's definitely been around forever, but I think it's really going to come to the mainstream in this next year, for mm -hmm. sure. Like, I mean, it's already mainstream, but it's really going to hit radio, commercial radio, and everything else like that. You're going to see Skrillex everywhere. And it's, yeah, right. <laughs> I'll have to turn the radio down then, I think. <laughs> um, it is what it is yeah, yeah it is well we're kind of seeing that over here as well I think that it's a tougher time for a lot of local bands but when guys like yourself and some of the bigger international bands that don't get here as often come over everyone still seems to sort of get up scrape the cash together to, to get to a gig here. you know Australia has religiously always been our, 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 our favourite market and our biggest and our best market and um, you know we're not really we're not worried about you know, this, we're not really worried. I mean, I, to be honest, I quite honestly haven't been too worried about the show selling or not selling it. I know that when we go there, that whoever's in front of us is, is going to explode. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, uh, I, I, know, I already know, the, you know, what's going to happen. So it's like, I'm not too worried about the shows hurting. However, around Soundwave, you have all these different side waves going on. So it's like, where is, where is someone going to spend their money at? But Australia, again, has been super good to us, so I'm not too worried. And the package is pretty mean, too. you got Zebrahead and, and other good bands, so. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you guys have been here, must, do you know how many times you've been here in the last 20 years? Must be a few. You know what? I, I want to say that the last time I counted coming down, it was like 23 or 24, so I think it's going to be like 24, 25, or 26. Uh, we've been down there a lot, and that's... Enough to, uh, enough to know I know where to get around down there. <laughs> yeah, you know your way. You know the back streets? Yeah, I know, I know how to get to, get to places. <laughs> That's cool. Um, tell me a bit about Swan. I, I've sort of, I didn't have much time to research, and I, I, I'm not familiar with the latest album, mate. What is it the same style of um, sort of, I know I'd call it sort of pop punk rock. Um, is, it that, is it much of a departure, or is it that same, same genre? Yeah, you know what? I mean, I think that this band kind of, evolves within every record cycle so it's like it's just another step in the evolution of whatever direction we're going which is influenced by things that we're listening to at the time and at the time of this record i was listening to like a lot of deant word and and mickey avalon and just kind of weird shit yeah Patsy klein and stuff like that and i think that kind of stuff translates uh when you're when you're writing and so uh, to me personally swan is is our best effort to date by miles I mean, it's the record that I definitely feel the most comfortable about playing in front of anyone or, like, you know, not being embarrassed about any tracks on the record, in fact. You know, we took a six-year hiatus, so when we did come back, I wanted to make sure that we made something that was... Can I say that the album's a blend of Di Antwood and Patsy Cline? You can, you can definitely say I was listening to a lot of that when I was <laughs> yeah, right. fighting. Sounds interesting, mate. So, and you've got a... It's a different lineup than people in Australia would have seen before. Um, will people notice that, do you think? Um, I mean... Of course, you'll notice different members. You know, if you follow the band, if you've been following the band for a long time. However, the live shows, you know, haven't really changed. In fact, you know, we like to think that they've just become more, more high energy and, and kind of like a revitalized, refreshed, unwritten law. 
we definitely have had people come up to us and go, well, I, I definitely wasn't, didn't know what to expect. I wasn't expecting this. And you guys, you know, blew me away. It's like mm -hmm. even better, which is, which is an amazing compliment. And, uh, I mean, the, the fact still remains that, you know, no one's, you know, more saddened that, you know, that, that PK and Steve aren't there than, than me. And it's like, you know, it's really been a hard thing to swallow. But the fact is, is that, yeah, sure. You know, on that road, that road, that road had to be crossed, and if you know, if I wanted to do it, I had to do it, and uh, you know, unwritten law is my life, and so yeah, I mean, I, mean, I had to come, I had, I couldn't stop. Yeah, you can't to, die wondering. What's that? You can't die wondering, mate. Yeah, man, and it's like you know, again, it's my life, and so it's like just because, I mean, I wasn't ready to stop touring, and the other boys obviously, the families, and you know, had different views on music and you know what what have you, but yeah, it's sad, to, it's definitely sad to see him leave, but it's definitely amazing with the new with the new crew for sure was the main reason for the the changing lineup was the other guys just different circumstances now families and over the touring and stuff i mean it was a, it was a combination of things it was a combination of, of of you know different people not you know it's not like not getting along but 20 years of being the same band with the same people so you know uh, mm -hmm. you know personalities clashing and then it's also you have like you know you, when you go out on tour there's not a lot of money to be made so on top of being away from your family for months at a time, you're also not coming home with anything to show for it. So between between like just the years of that, you know, and just kind of you know, it's everything combined. You know, everything takes its toll, and everyone has their you know their point of where you know they they don't want to continue on. I mean, that's the reason why we took a hiatus six years ago is because no one wanted to go get in that bus or that van or get on that plane and go on tour for months and. Just their families not come home with anything to show except for amazing memories, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. And tell me, how did you come across, or how did you put this band together? The, the guys, people you all knew, or...? Yeah, well, I mean, it's basically just Kevin and, and Derek, and what happened was, is with Kevin, he was the guitar player for my solo project, Scott Russo on the Big Big Bang, and he was also in the band Bullets and Octane. He's in the band Bullets and Octane. And before Steve had left, he had, you know, he had, he had, he had stated that he didn't want to go on work tours, it was going to be too long a day, no money. And so, you know, I approached Kevin, and I'm like, yo, Steve isn't making, can you make the set? And he's like, yeah, I got it. So he was kind of taken, taken care of. And then when, when PK left, uh, you know, we tried a whole bunch of bass players, and Derek was someone that Kevin and, and Dylan had played with. And when he came in, it just felt right, and it felt perfect immediately. So we, that was it. It was kind of a wrap after that. Yeah, great. Well, we, um, we just got the hurry up, mate. I, I heard the beep. Um, look forward to I'll be at Soundwave, so I'll catch you guys then, and I hope you enjoy your time in Australia, mate. That's what's up, hell yeah! Thank you very much, man. Take care.